Hello! So I'm going to show you guys a couple different ways to render a few different textures. So I'm going to start with a rock texture. This is compliments of my sister, who is a geologist, right? She teaches earth science. Um, and so she has a lot of rocks that she's found, right? So I just grabbed one. It's a little like smooth to touch, but to get this appearance of like the ridges of textures, there's a couple different ways to go about it, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do like a quick kind of gestural sketch about some of the planes I see, right? And just kind of get something down. Obviously I'm gonna draw my rock a lot bigger than what I see, right? So I'm not too worried with the contour, right? And so maybe I just have a quick cast shadow, right? Cause I'm doing something really gestural and then you can kind of work back into some of the finer details, right? So this is a, it's an 8B pencil, right? So I can kind of go along and really work out that outline, right? Kind of sharpen up some of those edges, right? So a lot of rock textures are pretty rigid, right? It's very rare to find an absolutely smooth rock, and of course that's a different kind of texture. So when I'm doing these videos, right, some of the tips that I'm giving you, you know, they're not going to apply to everything. It's not going to apply to every rock. You really have to kind of take what you know about different types of rendering, but then, you know, try a bunch of different things, right? It's not all kind of, you know, one shot deal, right? You have to play around with how you manipulate things, right? So I'm going to get some of these bigger ridges that I see and just kind of work them in. A little gesture. It's a kind of big ridge, right? So I can draw with my pencil and really build up that tone slowly. If I did that with you guys, we'd be sitting here for mm, probably about 40 minutes, right? So I'm going to go for, you know, my preferred material, which is vine charcoal or any charcoal. I'm going to take my sanding block work some of that down because what I'm looking for is I'm looking for that kind of flat edge. This also creates this nice kind of point so I can kind of chisel in some of those like harder edges if I want. Um, but something like this, having the broad side kind of work down, it's going to give me that texture pretty quickly, right? Because all I have to do is kind of work over and you can see I'm emulating a kind of rock texture without too much specificity, right? So work out some of these little like shavings. So I'm going to do that over the surface just a couple of different ways, right? Just to kind of get that feel for what I see, right? Because I can work some of the deeper shadows and the highlights, but I just want an essence of the texture, right? And so when you guys are working on drawings, you're going to find that, you know, you're drawn to certain things, but you still want to capture the gist of what you see. And so, you know, if rocks don't interest you, but you're like, oh, I still have to stay true to like the texture I'm seeing. Generalize, right? We're always kind of working general to specific. So I don't want you guys to feel like you have to spend a ton of time rendering, you know, a rock if it's really not interesting to you, right? So just by pulling the broad side of a piece of vine charcoal, I can kind of get some of that rough and tough texture, right? Similar thing with like this compressed charcoal is that it's gonna get that kind of rough texture as well. And it of course depends on the surface that you're working on, right? I have a piece of brown like craft paper. I put it down on my drawing board because, you know, you can see I paint and print a lot, right? So I don't wanna ruin my table. But for something like this, you know, it's not picking up too much texture. So now I can go in and focus and create some of those harsher ridges with some of the tips of my vine charcoal, right, and kind of blend that out. And of course, if this is too much texture, beauty about vine charcoal is you can kind of rub it out and then, you know, work back into the process, right? So I'm gonna kind of create some more pits that I see. Now remember my viewpoint's a little bit different than the videos, right? I'm slightly to the right of my camera. So I'm not gonna get 100% maybe the angle that you see, but you know, you guys can kind of figure that out as you work. Right? So I'm kind of creating some of these harsher ridges and it's all about that kind of push and pull, right? A lot of rock surfaces, especially this one, it's actually a pretty smooth rock. You know, it's not gonna like, you know, injure me if I like put my hand across it. It's actually pretty smooth to the touch, but I still wanna create all those kind of like little appearances of ridges. So for something like that one, that one is a pretty deep ridge. I wanna really pump that up a little bit. Right, so just the general idea. Now, of course, I can go in with an eraser and kind of maybe pull out some of those other shapes that I see. So if I got too heavy handed, 
you know, I can kind of create some of those highlights using the corner of my eraser and kind of pull back in the other way, right? So we've talked a lot about, you know, reductive techniques and additive techniques. So those are options that you guys can do, right? But it's getting that essence of what I see without too much specificity, right? And so it's really about, you know, kind of working slowly and building up that tone, but being okay with having some looser gestural moments, right? It's the essence of a rock. It doesn't have to be 100% all of the time, right? So one rock down, a couple more to go. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to try and render my little tiny, tiny glass container that I have here. Um, I collect a lot of still life materials, you know, through my travels. So I'm gonna try and render this and I'm gonna start with a pencil. We've done this technique before that kind of like elliptical, you know, pretend skeleton of an inanimate object. So I'm gonna start there, right? And remember, you know, when you're sketching or you're trying to place things in a still life, it's always important to kind of set up the page. So if I want my object to kind of be in this range, I need to, you know, make some markers so I don't, you know, cut off important parts, right? So I'm a little bit above this guy. Right, and he's not quite that big, but of course I am gonna like blow him up for our intensive purposes. So I have a little bit more of a top down view, right? Because my eyesight's much higher than this, right? So I don't see a full circle, but I see much more open ellipse towards the bottom of this container than I do at the top, right? And so the beauty about doing this kind of like elliptical skeleton method is it kind of sets you up for, you know, a kind of connect the dots or ridges, if you will, right? So then I can kind of, you know, get about equal sides, right? And I'm gonna work this drawing a lot more, right? So, you know, my little Skeletor drawing here. You can also kind of mimic at some of, you know, here's that, gestural kind of shadow. This is gonna be much darker under here. Um, but I'm gonna kind of leave this alone for a minute, right? Cause you know, like I stated in the rock texture video, me working in pencil is gonna be great if you guys have, you know, half an hour, Netflix is down and you got nothing else to watch. But I'm gonna take my little chamois here um, and I'm gonna get some tone on the page, right? So with transparent materials, this applies for Semi-transparent things like colored glass, um, even kind of reflective materials can fall in this category, but specifically with very clear glass materials, it's all about building up some of the tone that you see beyond and through your glass. So I can see some of the brown of my craft paper. I can see the white of the page, and I can also see how the glass distorts that, right? So I'm gonna, you know, kind of translate that to grayscale on my own. So I'm gonna kind of work this in a little bit more with, with my vine charcoal, you know, my preferred material. I don't think that's a surprise to any of you, right? Kind of rework my contour out a little bit, but I see this nice, Kind of shape, right? It's all about kind of picking out the shapes that you see beyond the glass. It's this arc, how this glass vial really distorts the colors that I see, right? So I'm gonna go right up to the rim, that lip of my glass, kind of blend that out a little bit. And then I have like the white tone of the page. Now I can kind of leave that, the tone of my newsprint, which is a little bit you know, a little bit lighter than white. I can always take my eraser back in and kind of work that in, but I'm gonna softly kind of blend that out a little bit as I find that when I'm trying to render glass materials that sometimes if my edges are a little too sharp, it throws off the illusion, right? So something else I see, you know, that really open ellipse at the bottom, I see that back rim, right? So I'm not gonna go fully, I'm just gonna kind of connect maybe about, you know, that's half of the back rim, probably about three quarters, maybe a little bit less. Kind of work that back out. Um, but I'm gonna leave that open for right now, right? Because I also have that beautiful kind of like weighted shadow, right? It's a cast shadow. My light is directly above my, my object, as you can see, right? My light is directly above. Um, but this is gonna help ground my object, right? So you guys can see that I'm starting to get that appearance of some kind of three-dimensional cylinder. What I'm also gonna do, I have this really kind of loopy shadow, right? And it's that cast shadow from the top of the rim reflecting on the paper. I'm gonna add that in, right? So it's not quite as big as my lips on the bottom, but I'm gonna kind of add that in. It's very gestural, very loose and very blended, right? And so with these shadows that are on the paper, 
if you soften up their edges a little bit, you're gonna get that appearance of like more of like a cast shadow effect as opposed to like that harsh kind of shadow I see right beneath the glass. The bottom portion of my container is also a little bit darker, right? So I'm just gonna add some tone there. Remember this guy, your chamois is a really good option for that because it helps kind of put that tone down, right? So I have, you know, essence of what I see. I'm also gonna add some tone right to the lip of my container. Right, and gets a little bit darker up towards this ridge. But when you're working on transparent things, it is literally all about building up the tone you see around it, right? And then focusing on the other things, right? So just to kind of stay true to my drawing, I'm gonna kind of cut my back paper in half, a little bit different of an angle. I'm gonna let you guys figure out what technique I could use to make sure I get the essence of that angle. I'm gonna give some darkness up here mainly because that craft paper is a little bit is a much darker tone than the white of the page. So for my drawing's sake, I'm going to add a little bit more richness so, so you guys can like more easily see. You can see by just addressing that negative space, my glass is already starting to come out a lot more than when I had it just, you know, on the newsprint by itself, right? So this is still a very loose and kind of gestural rendering. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my eraser and I'm also going to take my compressed charcoal. I'm going to pull out some of those um, highlights and those deeper shadows, right? So I kind of have this line running down the ridge here. I'm going to crisp that up a little bit. I of course could also switch to a pencil, but as we all know that, you know, graphite and charcoal don't love each other, right? So I'm gonna use a little bit different of a compressed charcoal. My other one was a little bit big, but I'm gonna really start pulling in some of those really specific lines and shapes, right? And it's kind of, I always say one, two, skip a few, right? You don't wanna do all of it, but you wanna do some of it just to kind of get the essence, right? So it's really all about what parts you kind of give that push and pull to what's gonna become blended tone and what's gonna be a crisp contour, right? You guys can see I can just blend out some of those edges a little sharper just by kind of working some of that vine charcoal in, right? So I am would really push this cast shadow at the bottom, mainly because I really love cast shadows and making them very dramatic, right? But this is also gonna help my glass pop off the ground a little more. I'm gonna leave this one faded, right? I'm just gonna leave that guy alone. Um, the next thing, let's see. I'm gonna ignore my little decorative flowers for right now and just try to, you know, get the illusion and the appearance of that glass. So I'm gonna, you know, always editing the process, right? You can always go back and kind of push and pull again. I'm really trying to get that ridge, that curve of the top of the glass. Work that in slowly. It's a little too much there. And I also going to kind of pull some of this across, right? We always talk about kind of cross contour. This still applies to when you're working with a very like smooth material. You know, pulling the like that shadow across in the same direction can really help, right? It's just going to help kind of your drawing come along and that kind of thing. I'm going to deepen that that background shadow a little bit. <clears throat> I'm gonna push this edge out just a hair, because I'm gonna erase back into it. All right, let's see. I'm gonna add this highlight here. Excuse me. I'm also gonna kind of come down with the flat end of my eraser and kind of work this, this part back in, right? And kind of really illuminate that side. So it's just helping this transparent glass pop off a little bit more. Just lost my vine charcoal. I'm also gonna work some of these crisper edges towards the bottom, really kind of round out that three quarters of appearance. starting to get that transparent look. You know, it's one of those things too that 
you really have to not only pay attention to the light and shadow, but just take your time, right? And really kind of work back and forth. I'm gonna shake off some of this and pull slowly, right? All right, I'm not too happy with this. I'm gonna lighten this back up ever so slightly. And you know, if I'm doing this in pencil, I'm building up that tone just as slow, right? It's all about that kind of slow and steady process. I'm gonna work this shadow back in just a little bit. Kind of lost it a little bit when I was erasing. Work that shadow back in. I'm also gonna pull this back in, this edge back here, and make that a little darker. You know, go big or go home, right? A little bit more reflection down in the bottom as well. And there's some in the front too that I'm gonna kind of pull around. And then I'm, I'm gonna just run my eraser gently across here just to kind of pull that edge back to the front, right? I don't wanna lose my shadow, but I wanna get that appearance of that kind of like disruption of that glass, right? And so Overall, you know, it's a work in progress, but I'm getting the feel of that transparency and I'm getting the feel of that glass, right? And so it's all about that kind of push and pull and knowing when to kind of leave some of those harsher highlights and walk away, right? So hopefully this gives you a little bit better of an idea of how to render transparent objects. Okay, so this one, we are going to render some very soft, fuzzy material. Um, with, you know, the ball of yarn, I'm gonna go for some of it. I'm gonna kind of gesture at the initial tone that I see, um, get the idea of the shape, and then I'm going to slowly build up some of this really soft, soft texture, right? So something like this can also be applied to hair, but one of the biggest things about rendering, you know, something that's piled up like this or, you know, something that grows, right? So like hair or fibers or anything like that. It's all about the direction in which you kind of create those those cross contour lines, right? So I'm gonna go pretty dark at first. I just need to get some tone on my page in all honesty because, you know, working in that like semi-reductive additive technique for me is a lot easier. If you don't have, you know, charcoal or very soft materials at home and you don't really have the option, to set your page up like this from the get-go. Building up with pencil is never a problem, right? You're gonna, you guys are gonna see me do both today, working with, you know, charcoal, compressed charcoal and some, you know, graphite pencils. All of it's on the table, right? You can kind of go this mixed media route, but just know that, you know, pencils, they do take a little bit more time, right? And that's never a bad thing, but you just have to have a little bit more patience, right? So I'm gonna kind of gesture at some of this initial kind of line work. So, you know, I could use the very small point to my little piece of vine charcoal here, or I could break him <laughs> and kind of, you know, work the width and kind of play around with some of those inner looping lines, right? So for those that are like, why would I ever draw a whole ball of yarn like this? Like, what are you thinking? You know, it's the general idea. You can kind of make up some of the lines as you go along and it's all about the essence, right? So it's almost like, you know, rendering meets scribble town, which is fine, right? You're kind of getting the essence of. So something about the vine charcoal that's really good for soft materials is that it is a very soft kind of appearance by nature. I know I have some rough textures, but it can smooth out really easily. And so you can kind of get that sense of overlapping soft things without having to focus too much on some of like the detail that you see, right? So something like charcoal is really kind of made for soft things. And then I can kind of go back in. I have one little loop here and then work that in individually, right? And start building up some more of that kind of like rope-esque yet soft texture, right? So it's all about that push and pull. One thing too to look for are some of those shapes, right? So I have a lot of very like deep shadow shapes. So looking for those like negative spaces within the positive form, right? So I have, you know, this kind of gap where I'm like, I don't see a lot of texture 
or you know it's getting really hard and muddled so you can look for some of those negative space shapes and it'll kind of start to help you get that push and pull of some of the actual lines that you can see right so as promised i'm going to kind of work with some of my graphite on top of this so i'm going to draw a strand that i see which is like right here and it kind of loops back to the background I might kind of tangent this with some of the compressed charcoal right because graphite can only get but so dark but all of the hair direction really kind of flows along this general shape right so it's one of those things you have to decide for yourself how much detail is too much detail right so i'm going to kind of loop a little bit right because these are not flat shapes they kind of pill out a little bit more right almost like you know it's not a perfect contour there's lumps and bumps all the way around right so you have to pick and choose how much you want to render but kind of working in some of the ones that are closest to you is probably a good idea right so remember when we talk about depth and creating that illusion of depth it's the things that are closer to you are usually in stronger contrast greater detail and the things that are further away from you that you don't either want to draw or you can't see as much detail you don't render it right so that's going to help push the spatial depth of your piece but it's also going to help just push you know visual interest it's going to be more appealing if you have some things intensely rendered and something kind of left a little bit more to the imagination right so i'm going to kind of work some of this hair along right and i'm going to pull some of this tone back right just so you guys can see a little bit more of what i'm doing got a little too heavy-handed with the charcoal i know we're all suppressed all right so i'm going to kind of you know am i going to do every hair uh no but i'm going to kind of slowly start to pull some of these little fibers out, right? So I'm gonna deepen that shadow so you guys can see a little bit more about what I'm doing. Right, so I'm slowly pulling these little fibers out, right? And so they have these kind of like little pits of shadow, right? And they kind of all stem from the same place. I'm gonna work some highlights back into, but what I'm essentially doing, I'm kind of do this off to the side, do a larger scale version of one. Right, this is like two connecting pieces of my yarn. I'm essentially kind of going in slowly and picking and choosing, you know, value tones for some of these fibrous materials and really kind of building up that tone very, very slowly, right? And so it's gonna come from both ends and they all kind of meet in the middle, right? And so it's all, when it comes to, you know, hair texture, really soft things that have a lot of fiber, it requires a lot of patience but it also just you know it's layers upon layers of value and tone and line work right you're not gonna get it all done in one go and if you do then it's not a texture you wanted to render in the first place right and so you know there's different ways to summarize and that's all fine and good but if you are really trying to practice rendering some of those more like linear or fibrous textures and still wanting them to be soft slow and tedious and patient is the way to go right so you know don't get frustrated but you guys can see that there's also like a lot of cross contour work when it comes to these right so uh, graphite so reflective right really building up that tone slowly um something else i could do too just to kind of help soften obviously i can kind of smear this along with my finger right or a blending stick something that looks like this right and kind of really push down and really soften up that tone I might just do this just so you guys can see it a little bit easier large scale so working with my graphite starting to build up some of those darker fibers also gonna put some in the middle right a nice sound effect for anyone that has a roommate that might be getting on their nerves you should do this when they're there just kidding all right so I'm gonna use my blending stick and just kind of smooth out some of that graphite which already even that like soft continuous tone there's a reason we don't usually refer to that kind of tone where it's like completely continuous as soft, right? Because it, it lends itself well to this. But now I can go in and I can be like, okay, maybe there are some stray, some stray hairs like here and there. 
maybe I do want to build this pit up. And so again, this is my 8B pencil. It's a pretty dark pencil. Graphite only gets so dark, so my expectation is not that it's going to get as dark or richly black as like my compressed charcoal, so I'm not going to get frustrated with that. You're just going to kind of live with, you know, the bounds of the material. But I am going to kind of really deepen this part. And so maybe I am going to pull in just a little bit of my vine charcoal here. Nothing too crazy, but just to kind of really help soften that connection of where like the two fibers go. And then I can like continue on with my like line work. And of course, there's always the option if you feel like there's a highlight more towards the middle. You guys can use your eraser, your kneaded eraser, your you know rubber eraser like the one that's in my hand and kind of pull some of those highlights back in, right? So you're starting to get that appearance of something that's not only soft, but also woven, right? So you can of course do the same thing with like compressed charcoal or vine charcoal. Just gonna get my general tone down here. Where's my chamois? There he is. Really soft just out of the gate. I love these things. But then I can slowly build up when I find my charcoal. It's the second piece I've lost so far. Just really start very slowly kind of pulling some individual strands in. And remember you have your sandpaper block, right? If you really do want to get that flat, very pointy edge, you just have to sand down some of your charcoal and you can get that like nice little point and make some more very delicate line work. It's an option. Okay, so I'm just gonna smooth that out a little bit. A few more lines. And it's all about the change of direction. You guys can see I'm kind of working in this like voluminous way where all of my lines, they're not all going like this. They're kind of working around the shape, right? And kind of coming in. So it looks more like that kind of woven appearance. A little too far there. And of course you can always pull some of those strands back out with your eraser. Kind of work that way, right? So two different effects of the same thing. Um, I personally like, especially with this one, the graphite a little bit more, because I think having that control of a pencil can really lend itself well, but you could always use a charcoal pencil if your vine charcoal is a little too messy, or you're just not getting that like really crisp line. Having that charcoal pencil to like work in can help bring that line back out. Because if I try to use my graphite, you're not really seeing it, right? It just be, kind of becomes this reflective distraction. So hopefully this was a little helpful on how to render some soft materials and I wish you luck.